Welcome back. We are now working at the junior level with the questions that several of you have had over two things, and I want to address both of them. The first is issues of this cover sheet, reading, writing, assessment, cover sheet packet stuff. I've had a number of questions, and so instead of answering them individually, I've elected to just do it this way. You can always go back and watch the video again. Uh, at uh, school tube or, or, or you know whatever if you need if you need clarification one more time the other thing I want to do is talk about these type papers that you brought with you today okay <clears throat> I'll be working on the whiteboard and hopefully by the time I'm finished I will have answered most of your questions about what's going on with this cover sheet let's start though by reiterating some of the things we said yesterday and again some of you will be looking at that cover sheet handout page because that's where you took some of your notes of yesterday as you are reminding yourself of what this looks like. Some of you will have a blank sheet of paper out and as we work on the whiteboard you literally will make your cover sheet as we speak. The first thing I need to say about this cover sheet is it's for record keeping. It's for record keeping. I get lots and lots of papers through the great bin. I need to know what I'm looking at so I don't have to flip through a bunch of pages to find out. That's the first thing we need to say. It's for record keeping. The other thing I would say is the cover page is kind of like a table of contents. It keeps in order all of the things that will be in your packet. Whatever, here's another way to say it if you want to write it down this way. Whatever's in the packet must be listed on the cover sheet. If it's not listed on the cover sheet, I don't want it in the packet. Everybody groovy with what I just said, okay? So it's kind of like a table of contents. Only, it's not a table of contents where you give me page numbers like in a book. It's a table of contents where you report whether you got it done or not. Got me? So you're going to list everything that's in the packet. I should say it probably better this way. You're going to list everything that's supposed to be in the pack. Got me? Right. I kind of like to, you know, work with the glasses half full type thing, right? So I want to be optimistic. Even if you don't get some of the things done that you were supposed to get done, on the cover page you still want to list what was due. Then you're going to report one of three messages. You're going to tell me about any one of those things listed on your cover sheet it's complete, it's incomplete, or we'll use the language partial. In other words, could you know some of it done, not all of it done. Crucial, you hear what I'm about to say. You do not want to misrepresent on your cover sheet. You will get an immediate zero for your, for your little project of the packet. If, for example, you say that an annotation is included and it's not, or you say that it's completely done and it's only partial, you always want to make sure you're reporting complete and accurate information on your cover sheet. Because I can't help but, inter but interpret your negligence as cheating. I mean, I, you know, Mr. McGee, I just forgot. I'm real sorry. It just doesn't work that way, you know. So you want to make sure you're very accurate on your cover sheet, reporting correct information. To leave it blank and not tell me whether it's complete, incomplete, or partial will mean that you lose points because I'm going to have to spend time having to figure out the status of that stuff. And I do not want to have to do that. That's part of the cover sheet. I'm giving you the responsibility to tell me whether your work is done or not. I get to then evaluate the quality of your work. Does that make sense? I'll look at how well you did it. I'm not interested in finding out if you did it, right? You're going to tell me that. Question. Can we write it out by hand? On the cover page, everything is typed. The only reason anything would be handwritten is if in a final second, right before you handed it in, you had to make an adjustment. And then you would work with blue or black ink, or red ink possibly, if you really wanted me to see it. Um, so the cover sheet's just for the type paper, is it? Say it a little louder. The cover sheet's not for the type paper. The cover sheet is not for the type paper. Type papers do not have a cover sheet. Type papers, we just work with that skeleton guide and that's all. Writing assessments do though? Writing assessment, reading, writing assessment packets do, yes. All reading and writing assessment packets then have a cover sheet. Let's walk through now what that looks like. 
okay? And some of you are saying, uh, dude, you did all this yesterday. And I would say, yeah, I know, but we're going to review it just to make sure one more time, all right? The first thing is going to be that login information, correct? At the top of the page. No, you do not write the word login, right? Okay? So there you're going to have things like your name, class period, date the paper is due, the name, the uh, what it is, uh, writing assessment, use WA, and then the topic. So for example, for this one it's what? Three messages from story of an hour, right? You can kind of abbreviate, right? This is really important to me in login information, that WA, it reminds me that I'm looking at a writing assessment and not a TP type paper. What you're handing in today will say either TP or WA. What you might want it to say is TP backslash WA because it's the same paper, right, that you'll be handing in next week. This for today was just writing practice, huh? Any questions about that? By the way, how you set this up, I really don't care. You can put it on the right side at the top. You can put it on the left side. You can put it dead on in the middle center. I really don't care. Here's the deal, though. Your cover sheets must be just one page long. So some of you will maybe have to reduce font size or whatever to get everything there, all right? For sure, though, stack this information kind of like this so I can read it really quick. Question. Does the cover sheet have to be done? No, 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 no requirements of double spacing on cover sheet. In fact, I'm going to recommend you not. Probably not. That, unless, you know, like the one that's coming up this next week, there's not a lot on it, you know, so. All right. The next thing I'm going to see is the word annotations. Oh, uh, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I put here uh, writing assessment and that for this cover sheet, that is wrong. I apologize. Mark through that. I just realized we're talking cover sheets for packet. This is reading, writing, assessment, packet, number one. I apologize. I forgot that's what we were reviewing was a cover sheet for the reading, writing, assessment packets. So that's real important to me. This right here is the intel I have to have, right? I got to have that so I know what I'm looking at, okay? Up here, you're going to say that this is the you're a junior period three and all that, okay? Then, down the left-hand side, I want to see the word annotations. I want to see a colon. You might underline it or whatever just to kind of make sure it's it kind of head up. And then go ahead and indent or tab in for all of your annotations. And then you're just going to list all annotations in order. Right? You're going to list them by page number and then what they are. Right? So, for example, page numbers for story of an hour and then just the words, the title story of an hour. Or maybe it's the questions in another future packet. There might be questions on the annotations, whatever. Okay? And then all you do is you just list those all the way down. And you put a little colon afterwards, and then you're going to write complete or, of course, incomplete or partial, depending upon the status of that annotation. You're going to put these in the order that they are assigned to you, right? Another way to say that is you're going to put them in the same order that they're listed at part one of your test sheet, 1A, 1B, 1C, etc. Yeah, we, this is a really important question. As juniors, we normally hand in our annotation reading, writing, assessment packets on the second day of a week. So, for example, next, next week, when do we hand them in next week? Tuesday. We hand them in on Tuesday of next week, right? So it's the second day of the week. Uh, but if we were to hand in a packet uh, on a Tuesday and we had school the day before Monday, do we include that annotation in the annotation? Normally, no, because uh, I want us to have enough time to be able to have in-class notes on our annotation, so we normally don't bump against it. So the one that was due on Monday just comes into the next packet the following week. Oh, 
Makes sense. Mr. McCreary. It's due on Wednesday. Due on Wednesday. That's kind of what I thought. In other words, it's a. I always give us. I always give it the second. The se I always give us uh, the second day of a week. And since we don't have school next week, it'll be on Wednesday, right? So the annotations that are due on Tuesday will not be a part of that. I think we said that yesterday as well. Question. So you just want the annotations from the previous week. That's correct. Annotations from the previous week is a good way to say it, Ms. Cottrell. We have to have this done when we come to class. You got it. So, for example, when you show up, you've already done all this work. Of course, as we've said before, you have orange period right before this class, so you guys are at an obvious advantage. Right. You do not want to show up, though, and go, oh, dude, i got to go to the lock, to the uh, lab to print. Way wrong answer. You want to show up, have it good to go. We score them real quickly with a colleague grader, and then they're in the omega file into the great bin, and then we're on to the next project. So, for a cover sheet, we could just take uh, for the cover sheet, you're just listing the annotations one right after the other, and then you're just reporting to me whether you got it done or not. So, for example, I think we said this yesterday, but let's say it one more time for you. On this one coming up, your cover sheet will say the following. It's first going to say 1 through 13 bullet point. Does anybody need to write this down? It's going to say 1 through 13 bullet point. Then it's going to say 758 to 765, story of an hour. Then it's going to say 24 to 31 bullet point. That's all it's going to say. You're only going to have three annotations listed here, which is why I was saying to Mr. McCreary, if you want, you can double space between them. Right? Go ahead and double space between them if you've got the room. If you run out of room, then you, you, you can kind of start taking space. Do you want to put the annotations under the package? Of course, Mr. Carter. Any, one more time. Let me say it one more time. This cover sheet is a table of contents. Anything that's listed on the cover sheet will be included in the packet. That's why we have the cover sheet. Do you got me? You're just reporting to me on the cover sheet that that work is done, not done, or partially done. Question. Yes, that's right. The re when, when we call this a reading assessment packet, we're assessing your reading by looking at your annotations. That's right. That's right. Beyond that, there's no other work. Okay, so it'll just be like a type paper and our annotations? That's correct. Your annotations first, followed by your writing assessment. Question, Mr. Mortimer. What was the type of uh, like front page we had to have that uh, had to have the thesis in it? You say we're about, about to get there. Okay. Great question. Mr. Mortimer says, now wait a minute. After annotations, there's something else on this cover page. You're absolutely right. Excellent question, but we'll go to Logan first. Um, when we do have, because um, we were supposed to do time writing yesterday, yes. when, we do a do, when we do a time writing in the future, will that go on the cover page? No, no, no. The, the cover page will only show the writing assessment that you're working with. Sometimes a writing assessment will also be a type paper that you type for practice, like the one that I'm giving to you on Story of an Hour. Most of the time, it won't, right? The only reason I'm doing this is to give you some practice. I mean, I spent some time with some of you in Orange Period just last hour, where we were still kind of talking about this paper we have to write. It made kind of sense to me, right, that we would get started on a little early since we have to hand it in next Wednesday. That's all. Got me? Since we're there, at the, is everybody groovy with the annotation side of things? Since we're there, um, then, at, uh, watch my whiteboard, after you finish then, it's going to say writing assessment, colon, just like that, okay? And then right afterwards, you're going to again write the word complete, incomplete or partial. If you need to give me some excuse reason as to why it didn't get completely done, that's where you'd put it. Question, Mr. Beck? Of course, to WA, yeah, you could. I'm going to know what that means, right? See, when I see this right here, I know that's what this cover sheet is. It's a reading, writing, assessment packet number one. By the way, this right here is what you will write down on your Omega record sheet as the title of these things. You'll just put it in the exam section, in the first section of the Omega record sheet. Because it's a grade in a grade book, right? After you do this, you then are going to give me three pieces of information. This is what Mr. Mortimer was referencing. You're going to give me three pieces of information. First, you're going to give me the academic title of your essay. Again, you're just going to cut and paste it. 
Now, hey guys, when I use the term cut and paste, do we all understand I'm talking about the technology of, of the word processing? Nobody's got to get out scissors and glue. Okay, right, okay, I just want to make sure everybody knows that, all right? It's, you're going to the finished essay, and you're actually going to take the academic title. Now, wait a minute, how do I know the academic title? How does it show on my actual paper? Where does it sit? Okay. The main First title or second title? Second. It's the second title. How do I understand it? It is in what? Parentheses. Yeah. You don't, need to cut, you don't need to cut and paste the parentheses. You can just put the title there without the parentheses. But that's the understanding. Then you're going to have the word thesis with a colon. And you're going to cut and paste. That's what CMP means. You're going to cut and paste it right there. What is the thesis? Last what? Sentence of the Last sentence of paragraph number one. Okay? That's your thesis sentence. Okay? So, for example, right here, it might say something like, an analysis of three messages from Chopin's story of an hour. Your thesis will say, there are three important messages from Chopin's story of an hour. Right? That's your thesis. Finally, you're going to have POV one, two, and three with colons. All right, and again, you're going to cut and paste right out of the essay. This, of course, are the what? First sentences of the three body paragraphs, right? Is everybody groovy with this? We all know what we're doing. Sorry? The creative doesn't go on there? Creative title does not go on there. I, I don't want it in the way, Mr. Mortimer, because quite frankly, the reason I'm doing this is just to make sure that I know what you're writing about. I don't need to, I, I, I'll see the creative title when I actually look at the paper. Okay. And then, the order in the Omega Phi, or I'm sorry, the order in this packet is the exact order as you've listed them right there on your cover sheet. Make sense? First things will be your annotations in order, followed by the paper itself. Typed, remember what we said about the paper, double spaced, 10 point times New Roman, the paper, the actual writing assessment paper. All right? Go, question. All stapled together, top left corner. All stapled together, top left corner. Mr. Beck. Is the writing assessment just one story out of all the annotations or is it all the The writing assessment topic? Well, I've assigned the writing assessment topic to you as the three messages from Story of an Hour, right? No, Ah, Mr. Beck, Mr. Beck's asking a great question. Now, coming in the future, Mr. McGee, how do we know what we're writing on? Two answers to that question. One, Ms. Stevens, you want to stay with me and hear this question, Ms. Stevens, okay? Stay attention. Pay, pay attention. Beck asked an important question. In the future, how do we know what we're writing on, what our topic is? Two ways. One, I will assign it to you, right? I will actually say, I want you as a group to work with blah, 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 blah. Another way will be for me to say, you decide what you're going to write on. You get to choose the topic. The only rules are, whatever you're writing on must treat one of the annotations from the previous week of reading. Make sense? So that way I ain't getting no papers on the history of the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, okay? I'm not saying that's not important, okay? I'm just saying we don't need a paper on it. At least not right now, Mr. Beck. You can write papers on that topic on your own later. Got, got me? Any questions? This is a question, though, Mr. Beck. Thank you. Right. And I'll let you know, as early as always, the previous week, Wednesday, that is to say yesterday, why? Because we always do master schedule review on that day. That's why it's so important that if you're not here on Wednesday, you get with somebody who is. And I often, I almost always will never videotape that part of Wednesday. So you're going to need to get that intel from your study buddy. That's why one of the very first things we did in this class was to create that study buddy. Remember when we did that? We weren't 20 minutes in this room and we were already talking about who are you going to rely on if you miss class. There was a reason for that, because you are going to miss sooner or later and you're going to need help, okay? By the way, you can always email me if you're on the road or whatever. How do you know my email address? You go to Learn Strong and it's right there, okay? Questions, comments, concerns?
Now what I want to do is I want to turn to the typed paper that you brought with you today. Take that out now. If you didn't bring a typed paper with you, take out a blank sheet of paper. I want you to take out page four of the skeleton guide. Uh, page four of the day one packet that's the skeleton guide. Page four of the day one packet that's the skeleton guide. All right. And I know that you guys were referencing this page as you were working with your, with your paper yesterday. Now some of you will leave this page four skeleton guide in the master schedule section of your notebook. Some of you will put it in what section of your notebook? The writing section of your notebook, since that's what it applies to. Okay. By the way, Mr. McGee, that other page on the, in the day one packet is something about my access printing. We'll get to that. We'll talk my access next week. All right. So here we are now talking together about the type paper that you just wrote last night or in some part, okay, maybe not completely done. The first thing I want to point out about this type paper is look at your test sheet real quickly. Look at your test sheet, okay? Do you see at 2A on your test sheet, it should say something about a type paper and story of an hour. Now why should it say that? Because guys, I won't give you your points on the actual type paper. I give you your points on the test sheet. Okay, that's where I'll put your points. So I need to know where that place is. You put it there for me at number 2A, okay? Now, over the course of an exam rotation, we may have several of these type papers. That's why we have multiple lines at 2A, B, C. Everybody groovy with that? Okay. So when you get your Omega file back tomorrow, the first place you want to look is to your type paper where there will be some points, all right? We hope, we hope. Now, Mr. McGee, how do you know how many points to give this? That all depends on how closely you followed Skeleton Guide. So let's look at your paper, let's look at Skeleton Guide, and let's decide if you feel like your paper is ready to be handed in today. If you elect to hand your paper in today, that will mean that you think your paper is ready to go. If you elect not to hand your paper in today, you will hand it in tomorrow to me. Either way, I'll give you points. Because my job here is to make sure that you understand what you're doing. I'm not going to penalize you for a late type paper today. Because I want to make sure you understand what you're doing. So right now, you should have your red ink pen out. Red ink pen out. Right now, you should have your type paper out. And we're going to address this uh, skeleton guide issue. We're going to walk all the way through it one more time. Uh, question, Brexit. Uh, if you're right, if I just underline the academic title, I didn't know. I forgot about that. I just underline it right here. Academic title? Yeah, just put parentheses around it real quick with ready. No worries. Hey, guys. Hello, hello. We're going to walk through this now one more time. Okay? And while we walk through this one more time, you're going to want to be taking notes on your actual type paper. If you find that you've made too many errors, you can take your paper, update it, and then give it to me tomorrow. Does that make sense? Because ultimately, for this paper anyway, you're going to actually hand it in for a grade when? Wednesday. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. Now let me point out something to you about how McGee reads your papers. I read on three different levels. Don't confuse this with reading levels that we use in class for annotations. Mr. McGee reads your papers on three levels. Really important you hear what I'm about to say. Level one reading, I'm only looking at the form of your paper. I can read your paper at level one in less than five seconds. Less than five seconds. Let's say, for example, I look at Mortimer's paper and immediately I don't see two titles and I don't see five indentions. Uh-oh, what's an indention mean? 
Paragraph. Paragraphs. If I don't see those five indentions and two titles, it didn't take me longer than three seconds to see that, and I immediately know I'm not looking at a, at a paper. Why not? We're not following skeleton guide if we don't what? Write in paragraphs. That makes sense? So at level one reading for me, I literally am doing nothing more than looking at the form of the paper. At level two reading, I'm looking at two things. I'm studying your thesis, and I'm studying your points of validation. A level two read of your paper, I'm looking at the information you put on that cover sheet for me. Got me? I should be able to tell a whole lot right from there. Let's say, for example, Mortimer hands in his writing assessment packet next week on Wednesday, and on where it says thesis on the cover sheet, he has written these words. What are three messages from Kate Chopin's story of an hour? Question mark. Well, if I'm reading at the second level, I'm looking at that thesis, and I'm saying to Mr. Mortimer, that ain't no thesis. Why is that no thesis? I raised it in the form of a question instead of a declaration. So I don't need to look any further in his essay if I'm looking at that second level of reading to realize this paper's got problems. On the other hand, if he has a clean thesis, clear points of validation, topic sentences, and all I'm doing is looking at level two, he's fine. He's made it. The third level of reading, and you can imagine where this all goes, right, is going to look more critically at what it is that you're doing in your validation itself. I start to look at, along with the other two things, I look in the, in the points of validation, I start paying close attention to issues of grammar, spelling, stuff like that. Hey, guys, what's the point? Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. What's the point? of me pointing out all your grammar mistakes if you can't even construct a thesis correctly. Right? I mean, it doesn't matter. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not going to jack your paper over grammar if we've got larger issues like just the form of the paper. Does that make sense? Okay. Early in our time together, I'm going to focus more at level one and two. I'm telling you this in advance. I'm going to focus more at one and two. That's my concern. Okay. Later in the semester, I start becoming more critical at level three. Does that make sense? You never, listen carefully, you never want to hand in a paper to me that has not been properly edited, though. If I start reading your paper and I notice all kinds of grammatical errors and spelling errors and the like, then I'll usually just jack your paper. I don't even often, don't even finish reading it. Okay? So before you hand in a paper to McGee, you always want to give it to someone you trust and have that someone read it. Suggestion. The people at home who are going to be signing all these documents you're turning in tomorrow, some of those people actually can be a pretty good proofer for you. Now, some of you don't have that, and I understand that. You need to find somebody else that can do it for you. But for those of you who do have it, use it. I've had students, juniors, who say, I don't like my mom looking at my stuff. She finds too many mistakes. What kind of dope are you on? You want someone to find all those mistakes because if your ma don't, uh, if your ma don't find them, I will. And when I find them, then I got to jack your score. Does that make sense? So a huge part of your learning how to write better is the editing phase, but you'll do that before you hand your paper in to me. Now today, we're going to go through this in terms of level one, two. We're going to look at these form issues and make sure we're all good to go. If you find you've got too many mistakes on the paper you worked with, Hand it in to me tomorrow. You'll have a little note that will say at the top, Mr. McGee, I elected to hand in one day late simply because I wanted to make sure I got it all correct. Okay? So don't feel obligated today to hand me in something that's going to have all kinds of issues. All right? Question. Oh, okay, now guys, listen to the question that she just asked because it's a huge one. Okay, Mr. McGee, but if I don't turn in my type paper today, does that mean tomorrow the best I can get is 75%? Whoa, 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 you missed something. You, you missed something, so listen carefully. Late penalties only factor in writing assessments, not in type papers. Type papers only end up as plus negative points on the test sheet. There ain't no 75% on the test sheet. There's plus 5 or plus 10 on the test sheet, right? But no 75%. So normally, if I have a test or a, a type paper that's due, I want it due on the day that it's due. Or the next day, if you hand it in late, I will reduce some points off of that, but it's on the test sheet. Do you got me? You have time 
right up until the day of the exam to hand in a typed paper to me. Now, granted, you may not get a lot of points because it's so late. A lot of that might depend, though, on why you're handing it in late to me. Okay? Make sense? It's a good question. Question, Mr. McCreary. How many points are possible? Right. See, Mr. McCreary's going to ask a really important question. That's right. That's right. Okay? Do you understand? Okay. Excellent. That's an excellent question. Okay? So, you'll receive some points on your test sheet. Mr. McCreary says, Mr. McGee, before I hand this in, I need to know how many points. Mr. McGee says, that's right. That's right. Good job. Questions, comments? Any other questions? Okay, any other questions? All right, let's look at your papers then. I recommend you have out red ink. It's that way if you find any errors or whatever, you can point those out. Okay. First of all, start with login. Do you have your first name? Do you have this class period? By the way, any of these things I'm going through, you need to write this down, okay? Do you have your name? Do you have your class period there? Does it say junior English? Does it say that it's a typed paper? Backslash writing assessment, because that's what it is, right? We're going to use this next week, aren't we? Again, all this stuff we're outlining, you can just hit, you add it right now in red ink. In red ink. Can you still turn in the paper with Of course, of course. Like I said, if you decide that you know, you're, you're, you're adding a few things, but it's not that big of a deal, then yeah, you'll give it to me. And if not, then you'll just make corrections and give it to me tomorrow. Do you have what the paper's topic is? TP backslash back, uh, WA pay, uh, three messages over story of an hour, or just essay on story of an hour, something like that, something that tells me what the topic was. That would be in our login. You got it. Just put it right there in the login. Just put it right there in the login. This allows me to have good record keeping about what it is I'm looking at. Okay? And some of you, because you're kind of already getting ready for next Wednesday, you put on there that this is the writing assessment for packet number one. And if you want to put that there, that's fine too. You're ultimately going to have that, aren't you? When you hand it in to me as a writing assessment, you're going to actually call it that, a writing assessment for packet number one. Some of you will go ahead and put that there now, just simply because you're going to hand it in next week. That way you don't forget it. Okay? Did I leave out anything on login? All right. Next thing I need to see are two titles. Important. These two titles are centered. In the front, in the top of your page, the first one is a creative title. You do not underline. It's just a creative title. You do not underline. Double spaced right beneath it, in parentheses, your academic title. And that academic title needs to begin with the language, a treatment of, or an analysis of, or a discussion of, and that's the language I want. And then make sure that your academic title has two, let's call it three, things. Make sure it says something about there being three messages. Make sure it has the author's full name, Kate Chopin. And make sure that it has the full title of the text, Story of an Hour. Make sure Story of an Hour is italicized. The academic title is not underlined. It is not underlined. It is only set off in parenthetics. Uh, any questions? Go ahead. Okay, anybody else? Questions? Then, I'm going to see a couple of spaces, and I'm going to see an indention mark, a tab mark. Why am I going to see that? Paragraphing. You got it. I will not see the term intro paragraph. Way wrong answer. We all kind of know that from code language. You don't actually write it. I should see an introductory first line. There should be maybe a quote there from some place, or there should be a funny observation. For sure, don't hand in your paper to me if your first line says there are three important messages in Chopin's story of an hour. That's called a thesis. That is not your first sentence. What sentence is that of the first paragraph? Your last sentence of the first paragraph. Right? And then I'm going to have you just scan this first paragraph real quickly. I'll ask questions. If you don't have the correct answer as in yes, then obviously you won't be handing in your paper to me today. Do you mention the full name of Kate Chopin? Do you say something about Kate Chopin, maybe providing her dates or something like that? Do you use the full title, Story of an Hour, and is it, a, is it like...